trees and vines, O successor of the victor, and lands, why diversity, and the long austerities of the seer as well. Successor of the victor, you ask me, what is your lineage, who is your teacher? Why are people of less than optimal intelligence? In yoga, why are you not awakened in the realm of desire? You ask me, why then is the aim found in the midst of the highest heavens? How does worldly super-knowledge come about, and mendicancy? You ask me about created Buddhas based on development, and how Buddhas of true knowledge and communities come to be. You ask, successor of the victor, about unworldly lands resembling lutes, drums and flowers, and seven of the stages is mind. These and a good many other questions you ask me, son. Addressing each one, I will utter conclusive instruction. With illustrations, without the ills of opinion. Listen to me intently. I will make reference to the topics. Listen to me, son. There are 108 topics as expounded by Buddhists. Quote. Then Mahamadhi, the great Bodhisattva, said this to the Blessed One. What are the 108 topics, Blessed One? Quote. The Blessed One said, the topic of origination, the topic of non-origination. The topic of permanence, the topic of impermanence. The topic of description, the topic of having no description. The topic of continuity and difference, the topic of having no continuity or difference. The topic of momentariness, the topic of non-momentariness. The topic of inherent nature, the topic of having no inherent nature. The topic of emptiness, the topic of non-emptiness. The topic of annihilation, the topic of non-annihilation. The topic of thought, the topic of no thought. The topic of the center, the topic of the uncentered. The topic of permanence, the topic of impermanence. The topic of certainty, the topic of uncertainty. The topic of reason, the topic of unreason. The topic of affliction, the topic of non-affliction. The topic of craving, the topic of non-craving. The topic of expedience, the topic of inexpediency. The topic of skillfulness, the topic of unskillfulness. The topic of purity, the topic of impurity. The topic of suitability, the topic of unsuitability. The topic of exemplification, the topic of having no exemplification. The topic of students, the topic of non-students. The topic of teachers, the topic of non-teachers. The topic of lineages, the topic of having no lineage. The topic of three vehicles, the topic of there being no three vehicles. The topic of the imageless, the topic of what is not imageless. The topic of undertaking vows, the topic of not undertaking vows. The topic of three spheres, the topic of there being no three spheres. The topic of signs, the topic of the signless. The topic of notions of being and non-being, the topic of having no notions of being and non-being. The topic of both, the topic of neither. The topic of spontaneous first-hand ultimate knowledge, the topic of knowledge that is not spontaneous first-hand or ultimate. The topic of the bliss of having seen truth, the topic of bliss without having seen the truth. The topic of fields, the topic of what is not a field. The topic of particles, the topic of what is not particulate. The topic of water, the topic of no water. The topic of dry soil, the topic of no soil. The topic of elements, the topic of what has no elements. The topic of what is reckoned by numbers, the topic of what is not reckoned by numbers. The topic of super-knowledge, the topic of lack of super-knowledge. The topic of distress, the topic of not being distressed. The topic of the solid, the topic of the non-solid. The topic of skills, arts, and sciences, the topic of absence of skills, arts, and sciences. The topic of wind, the topic of no wind. The topic of earth, the topic of no earth. The topic of the conceivable, the topic of the inconceivable. The topic of representation, the topic of no representation. The topic of identity, the topic of having no identity. The topic of the constituents of body and mind, the topic of absence of constituents of body and mind. The topic of beings, the topic of no beings. The topic of comprehension, the topic of non-comprehension. The topic of nirvana, the topic of non-extinction. The topic of the knowable, the topic of the unknowable. The topic of holiness, the topic of unholiness.
The topic of tumult, the topic of no tumult. The topic of illusion, the topic of no illusion. The topic of dreams, the topic of no dreaming. The topic of mirage, the topic of no mirage. The topic of reflection, the topic of no reflection. The topic of a sphere, the topic of no sphere. The topic of angels, the topic of no angels. The topic of deities, the topic of no deities. The topic of food and drink, the topic of no food and drink. The topic of sexual intercourse, the topic of no sexual intercourse. The topic of the seen, the topic of the unseen. The topic of the transcendent, the topic of the non-transcendent. The topic of morality, the topic of amorality. The topic of moon, sun, and stars, the topic of no moon, sun, or stars. The topic of truth, the topic of untruth. The topic of result, the topic of no result. The topic of annihilation, the topic of non-annihilation. The topic of rising from annihilation, the topic of not rising from annihilation. The topic of healing, the topic of no healing. The topic of characteristics, the topic of no characteristics. The topic of components, the topic of no components. The topic of arts and sciences, the topic of having no arts or sciences. The topic of meditation, the topic of no meditation. The topic of confusion, the topic of no confusion. The topic of the perceptible, the topic of the imperceptible. The topic of what is to be preserved, the topic of what is not to be preserved. The topic of lineage, the topic of no lineage. The topic of sages, the topic of non-sages. The topic of sovereignty, the topic of non-sovereignty. The topic of grasping, the topic of non-grasping. The topic of treasure, the topic of non-treasure. The topic of explanation, the topic of non-explanation. The topic of the incorrigible, the topic of the non-incorrigible. The topic of female, male, and neuter, the topic of not female, male or neuter. The topic of flavor, the topic of no flavor. The topic of performance, the topic of non-performance. The topic of the body, the topic of no body. The topic of thought, the topic of no thought. The topic of movement, the topic of no movement. The topic of faculties, the topic of no faculties. The topic of the constructed, the topic of the uncreated. The topic of cause and effect, the topic of no cause and effect. The topic of the lower, the topic of the highest. The topic of order, the topic of no order. The topic of tree, bush, and creeper cover, the topic of no tree, bush, and creeper cover. The topic of variety, the topic of non-variety. The topic of descent of teaching, the topic of no descent of teaching. The topic of morality, the topic of amorality. The topic of mendicants, the topic of non-mendicants. The topic of empowerment, the topic of no empowerment. The topic of the indestructible, the topic of the non-indestructible. These, Mahamadhi, are the 108 topics expounded by past Buddhas. Quote, then Maham Adi, the great Bodhisattva, went on to say to the Blessed One, How many kinds of origination, abiding, and extinction of the consciousnesses are there? Quote, the Blessed One said, There are two parts of origination, abiding, and extinction of the consciousnesses, which logicians, however, do not realize. There is the extinction of continuity and the extinction of distinctive marks. The origination of consciousness is twofold, the origination of continuity and the origination of distinctive marks. Abiding is twofold, abiding of continuity and abiding of distinctive marks. Consciousness is threefold. Characterized by emergence, characterized by action, and characterized by production. There are two divisions of consciousness, Mahamadhi, which is described in brief as eightfold. Perceptive consciousness and consciousness particularizing things. As a mirror reflects form, Mahamadhi, so will perceptive consciousness and form. This perceptive consciousness and consciousness particularizing things are an indivisible pair, causing each other. Therein, perceptive consciousness, Mahamadhi, is the cause of development of inconceivable impressions. And consciousness particularizing things, Mahamadhi, is the cause of notions of objects and the cause of impressions of conceptual elaboration since beginningless time. Therein the extinction of consciousness in all sense organs, 
Mahamadi, namely the extinction of the receptacle consciousness as variety of impressions of unreal imaginations, is extinction of defining characteristics. As for extinction of continuity, Mahamadi, and where it comes from, where from means based on which and depending on what. What the basis is there is the faulty impressions made by conceptual elaboration since beginningless time. What it depends on is imaginings regarding the objects of consciousness of what is perceptible to one's own mind. It is like a lump of clay compared to particles of clay. They are neither different nor not different. So is gold compared to ornaments. If the lump of clay were different from particles of clay, it would not be composed by them. But it is composed by those particles of clay, so it is not other. Yet if it were not different there would be no distinguishing the lump and the particles of clay. In the same way, Mahamadi, if the consciousnesses of perception were other than the natural state of the receptacle consciousness, they would not be grounded in the receptacle consciousness. Then the extinction of consciousnesses of perception which are no different would be the extinction of the receptacle consciousness, but the extinction of its natural state does not happen. So, Maham Adi, there is no extinction of the natural state of the consciousnesses, but rather extinction of compulsive activity. With the extinguishing of the natural state, moreover, the receptacle consciousness would be extinct. And with the extinction of the receptacle consciousness, this doctrine would be no different from dogmatic nihilism. This dogmatic doctrine, Maham Adi, is that the cessation of continuity of consciousness come about through the cessation of apprehension of objects. From the cessation of continuity of consciousness there would be termination of the continuity of beginningless time. And dogmatists describe the origination of continuity as for a reason. They do not describe origination as from the combination of eye consciousness, form, and light, but for another reason. And the reason, Maham Adi, is beliefs in an originator, a soul, a god, time, or atoms. Furthermore, Maham Adi, the nature of things is sevenfold. The nature of combination, the nature of becoming, the nature of characteristics, the nature of elements, the nature of causes, the nature of conditions, and the nature of completion. Ultimate meaning is also sevenfold. The scope of mind. The scope of knowledge. The scope of insight. The scope of duality of view, the range beyond duality of view, the range of progress through the stages of enlightenment, and the range of individual attainment of one who has arrived at reality. This, Mahum Adi, is the heart of the ultimate meaning of the nature of things. According to the realized ones, were these correctly and completely enlightened ones of past, future, and present with which the realized ones determine mundane and transcendental laws in individual and general terms with the wise eye of insight, and they determine them in a manner that is not like the wrong views of dogmatic doctrines. And how do the commonalities of wrong views of dogmatic doctrines come about? Due to failure to recognize views of constructions of subjective mental objects of the consciousnesses, because of not realizing they are only objects of subjective thought, ignorant ordinary people become dualists in their views of the ultimate meaning of the nature of being and non-being. I will also tell you about extinction of the three miseries produced by imagination, cessation of the active conditions of ignorant craving, observing illusory objects as subjective mental percepts. Any ascetics or Brahmins, Mahamadi, who expect to find a substance not previously existing whose manifestation results from a supposed cause, abiding in time, and in conditions the origination and abiding of the clusters, elements, and media, as whatever comes into being passes away, they become nihilists denying continuity, activity, becoming and decay, the path of nirvana, the fruit of works, and truth. Why? because of not having this primary vision of the ungraspable by direct perception. Just as potsherds don't function as a pot, and burnt seed doesn't sprout, whatever existences of the clusters, media, and elements have passed away, or passing away, and will pass away, have no uninterrupted flow, being based on vision of imagination of objects of subjective thought. Furthermore, Mahum Adi, if the supposed origination of consciousnesses took place through the combination of activities of three conditions, then even unreal turtle hair and oil from sand would occur.
This implies abandonment of the original proposition and destruction of certainty, and reality and unreality are spoken of as if performance, action, and instrumentality were meaningless. The explanation by conjunction of activity of three combined conditions occurs to them as self-evident cause and effect. By traditional precepts of reasoning on the ground of thought, they will declare the existence of unreal appearance of the reality of past future, and present because of their pernicious habits of subjective views. Thus immature people, bitten by false views with unstable minds, will say of what is deduced by ignorance that it is all established. Other ascetics are priests who, by seeing the elaboration since beginning time of construction of subjective mental objects as external, of the nature of clouds, fire wheels, castles in the air, illusions that never happened, mirages, the moon in the water, and dreams, having no intrinsic being, are freed by cessation of belief in the constructions of their own minds. Freed from definitions of characteristics is defined by wholly imaginary terms, and will realize detachment from the grasped and the grasper of objects of the receptacle consciousness, the equivalent of a foundation for the body and experience. A state without images where origination, abiding, and decay are irrelevant corresponding to the arising of subjective thought. It will not be long before they live for enlightenment, great people who have attained equality of life experience and nirvana. By effortless application of great compassion and skill and means. By equanimity toward all beings as toward illusory images. By never becoming dependent. By freedom from internal and external objects. By not seeing anything outside mind, in accord with a groundless basis. By progressively going through the states of concentration of the steps of the stages, considering all in the world being mind, cultivating confidently they attain concentration like magic. By descent into the unmanifest depths of their own minds, having attained enjoyment of transcendent insight, detached from origination, activity, and effort. Those bodhisattvas will attain a body of realization with a body of lightning-like concentration as an emanation of reality adorned with powers, super-knowledges, masteries, pity, compassion, and expedience, visiting the holy sites in all Buddha lands, detached from thought, intellect, and cognition, with their minds independent. From that, by attainment conforming to the body of those who arrive at reality, Great people living for enlightenment, in accord with mind alone, shall become detached from conceptual elaboration of the clusters, elements, sense media, thought causes, conditions, activity, effort, origin, abiding, and decay. Seeing the three realms of existence is caused by the impressions of mistaken ideas elaborated since beginningless time. By mindfulness of the non-origination of the imageless stage of Buddhahood, Having attained the ultimate truth firsthand, the master of one's own mind, having attained effortless practice, like a jewel of all colors, maintains certainty in the orderly combination of the steps of the stages by means of subtle created forms entering the minds of beings through understanding mind alone. Thus, Mahamadhi is a great bodhisattva to become skilled in achieving his own purpose. Quote, Mahamadhi then said, Please tell me the developed cycle of teaching describing the essence of mind, intellect, cognitive consciousness, and the five elements, followed by the enlightened and those living for enlightenment, detached from the sphere of subjective mental objects, refuting all appearances of reality connected with what can be verbalized the heart of the instruction of all Buddhas, beginning with the Bodhisattvas abiding on Malaya.